powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Jay Cohn. And I'm Janelle Slade. Just days after a longtime Mile City athletic trainer is arrested on child pornography charges, another dozen victims come forward in a massive sex abuse case against the trainer. And now an amended complaint states the 12 men say they were also sexually abused by 74-year-old James Jensen while they attended Custer County High School where Jensen worked as the school's trainer. And tonight we're learning of new evidence that the victim's lawyer, John Heenan, is calling a smoking gun in the lawsuit against the school district. It was back in September when a civil lawsuit was filed in Custer County District Court alleging Jensen sexually abused male students at Custer County High School in Miles City, beginning as far back as the 1970s, lasting until Jensen left the school district in 1998. The suit alleges the school district knew of Jensen's abuse and refused to act. In response, the Miles City Unified School District launched a lawsuit of its own against Jensen. But just last night, new evidence obtained in discovery revealed a letter given to Jensen by the school district back in 1997. This after a complaint by three male athletes. Now, the letter said Jensen violated policy concerning student interactions and outlined six objectives for Jensen to comply with. One of those objectives says Jensen must refrain in working with students one on one. He was also told not to give body rubdowns unless a third person was present to maintain a line of sight. Also in the letter, Jensen's told to cease his mentoring program and that student athletes should no longer be invited to Jensen's home without another adult present. That civil suit now totals 31 plaintiffs. However, attorney Heenan says there are dozens more, some who have yet to decide whether to join this lawsuit. But Heenan points out the time is running out. The judge has set a deadline of late February for additional victims to come forward. Now we reached out to the attorney representing the Miles City School District in this case who said, quote, we disagree with the facts presented and have been more than complying with discovery, unquote. In other news tonight, the developer of a huge West End mansion in Billings admits to embezzlement and fraud today in federal court. 38-year-old Larry Wayne Price Jr. admitted to his crimes, including defrauding three companies of more than $20 million and lying to investigators about a false abduction. Prosecutors say Price used the embezzled money to develop and build this 26,000-square-foot mansion on the Billings West End. The listing price for the mansion this summer was $17 million. According to the U.S. Department of Justice, Price embezzled more than $20 million from three coal-related companies, 90M LLC out of Wyoming, Three Blind Mice LLC also out of Wyoming, and Signal Peak Energy, which operates a Roundup coal mine. Now, Price first ran into trouble this past summer. That's when he was arrested in the state of Virginia and accused of faking his own abduction in an attempt to flee his creditors. Price faces the forfeiture of real estate and personal property derived from those crimes, including the mansion in Billings and other homes in Montana and Virginia, along with trailers, jewelry, and more. The government agrees that the forfeited property will be used for restitution for victims. Price was released today pending his sentencing. The suspect arrested for the death of a construction worker south of Billings this fall pleads not guilty today. 28-year-old Ethan Anderson is charged with vehicular homicide and criminal endangerment following the October 24th crash that killed 52-year-old Jeff Dykeman of Billings. Court documents state authorities found dust off, a compressed air product often used to clean keyboards and other electronics in Anderson's truck. The product contains a substance often used to get high. Anderson told authorities he blacked out and does not remember the crash that day. This morning, a judge reduced Anderson's bond from $100 to $50,000. Last night, the Billing City Council got its first look at the final draft plan for the proposed One Big Sky development. Now, leaders of the project presented their study to the council Monday night, giving a glimpse of what could possibly be in the works. Q2's Russ Riesinger was there and joins us now with details. Russ. Well, leaders of One Big Sky say the project is key not only to Billings' economic future, but to the entire state's. They call it a vision to create one of America's great cities of tomorrow. That vision includes four core districts in downtown Billings, each with its own anchor. A convention center that might look something like this would be the shining star of the entertainment district. The convention center could also be used for festivals, athletic events, or concerts. It's something that Montana really doesn't have right now and could possibly attract a lot of out-of-state convention goers who would stick around see more of Montana. 
Now, the idea behind the lifestyle district is to provide urban housing and a public market, something leaders say would attract more retail businesses to downtown. There would also be an education district and a health and wellness district that would play to the strength of the growing hospitals in town. Bob Dunn, the developer overseeing the project, told council that Montana ranks near the bottom when it comes to attracting tomorrow's workforce and that one big sky could go a long way toward changing that. Imagine for a minute if you had that convention center, that stock of housing built above a public or next to a public market and a civic core to your downtown with things like fitness, wellness, urban retail. Do you think that would have an impact on your interest in moving to Billings? Well, there's still a lot that has to happen before this vision become a, can uh, become a reality, including financial backing from both the city and the state. There will be several open forums after the first of the year for the public to learn more and weigh in on this. The first one is coming up on January 4th. Jay, Janelle? All right, thanks so much, Russ. It's onward and outward for the Alberta Bear Theater. This after the Billing City Council last night voted to allow for a street encroachment permit for the theater to expand. Now this means when construction begins this spring, the theater will expand landscaping and a plaza to the south side of the theater along 3rd Avenue North. It's one hurdle. Executive Director Jan Dietrich says they've cleared, but there are more ahead. She says there are many remodeling decisions to work out with architects and construction crews. The theater will close May 1st to begin the $12 million renovation and construction project. After learning the council approved for the plans last night, Dietrich says it's feeling like an exciting time for downtown Billings. I think it's fabulous for our downtown as far as One Big Sky Center, what the Babcock is doing right now, Art House with Phase Two, the theater, um, but also for the larger community. Um, if you want to draw people to Billings, we need to have offerings culturally for them. So I think it's a very exciting time right now for, for Billings and our larger community. And there is more fundraising work to be done. So far, the project has raised $10 million of the goal with $2 million to go. A new city councilman and a new school board member for Billings introduced and confirmed Monday night. First on the city council, Roy Neese was selected by Mayor Bill Cole to replace Larry Brewster in Ward 2. Neese is a past chairman of the Billings Heights Task Force. He's lived in Billings since 1993. He was the mayor's top choice among eight applicants to replace Councilman Brewster, who resigned at the end of November. And the Billings School Board welcomed new board member Scott McCullough onto the board Monday night. McCullough has a long history in education, including a long career in the classroom as a history teacher. He's also a past president of the Billings Education Association. McCullough replaces the late Bruce McIntyre as trustee for Zone 5. His appointment is for the remainder of the 2018-2019 school year, running through the next annual school election. Turning to weather, all is calm here, but Western Montana, a much different story tonight, Bob. Big winter storm there. We got some pictures from the Department of Transportation. Let me take a look. Let me show you this. This is Lookout Pass. That's what they had this morning. Oh, my goodness, yeah. And that stuff was sticking to the streets. Now, let me show you another picture. This was Lockwood Exchange. Boy, it's like two different states, huh? It's hard to believe they're both in the same one, but let me show you it's moving into the west. You can see the Doppler radar there. A lot of rain and snow moving into that region. It's the beginning of a new winter storm moving that region. Now, we are looking at winter weather advisories already. Could see maybe up to 18 inches of snow on some of the higher elevations above the pass level. At the pass level, probably more like four to eight inches of snow, basically on the front range of the Rockies and also in the Bitterroots and also by Missoula. So look at this. A little farther east, we do have some gusty winds gusting up to 70 miles per hour in Billings, maybe 50 to 60. 60 mile per hour winds starting tonight and going through tomorrow evening about this time. We'll have the rest of your forecast in a few more minutes. All right, thanks, Bob. Still ahead on tonight's 530 News, new studies coming out that show the danger of e-cigarettes. We'll bring you a closer look at the latest findings. And tonight in sports, meet the three billing swimmers who made noise on the national stage last week. You're watching MTN News with Jay Cohn and Janelle Slade. Storm Tracker weather with Bob McGuire and sports with Scott Green. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader.